All right. My name is Ann Carmichael, and I'm going to present this evening on the college financial aid process. If you have questions, I am happy to answer them. And we're going to talk a little bit um, toward the end of the presentation on how you can contact me. All right. We all know that college can be expensive, so it is time to start um, preparing for those costs, which are going to include your equipment, books and supplies, personal expenses, room and board, and then the big one, tuition and fees. So when you're looking at colleges, if cost is a factor in making your decision, make sure that you're looking at the school's total cost of attendance. And the good news is that financial aid is available from the federal government, the state of Louisiana, your college or career school, and then nonprofit and private organizations. Now, there are three types of student financial aid. There's free money, borrowed money, and earned money. Types of federal student aid include the federal Pell Grant, the federal Supplemental Education Opportunity Grant, the Teacher Educational Assistance for College and Higher Education Grant, the Iraq and Afghanistan Service Grant, Federal Work Study, and Direct Subsidized, Unsubsidized, and PLUS Loans. The grant family through federal student aid will include the Pell Grant, which is for undergraduates with financial need, FSEOGs, for undergraduates with exceptional financial need, service grants for students of military parents who died defending the country following 9-11, and then TEACH grants for students pursuing a teaching career. The Federal Work Study Program provides part-time jobs to help the student pay for his education expenses. So when you answer yes on the FAFSA to the Federal Work Study Program, the college will begin to consider you for available jobs on their campus. Then any money that you might earn from those jobs will be paid directly to you, the student, to help you pay for your college expenses. Now these jobs look great on your first professional resume. So if you are going to a four-year college and accept a federal work study job, say in the financial aid office, that is four years of work history to provide. And of course, no one wants to have to borrow, but if you cannot complete your college degree without student loans, then you are a good investment. The important thing is to borrow only what you need to complete your education. And it's important to understand the types of loans that you might be offered. So direct subsidized loans are based on financial need and no interest is charged until you graduate or cease to attend. And these are known as need-based loans. On the other hand, almost everyone is eligible for direct unsubsidized loans, regardless of your financial need. But it's important to remember that interest does begin to accrue on this type of loan once it's fully dispersed and then throughout the life of the loan. So you can see that there is a big difference between direct unsubsidized and subsidized loans. When you receive your student financial aid offer, you want to remember to always accept the subsidized loans first. And you can remember this by telling yourself that the U and unsubsidized means that you always pay the interest on that portion. 
Now, if you do make the decision to accept loans, you always want to accept the federal student loans first because no payments are due until you graduate or cease to attend. The interest rate is fixed at a lower rate and no credit check is required. Federal student loans are in the student's name only, whereas private student loans should be accepted only as needed. Because some lenders are going to ask that you begin repayment on these loans while you're still in school, the interest rate might be variable and often it is higher and they almost always require a cosigner. So make sure that you and your family are doing your research selecting a private lender. Now, student financial aid can be used at four-year public and private colleges, community colleges, career and technical schools for part-time and online college courses. And all federal student aid and most institutional and private aid is contingent upon completion of the free application for federal student aid or the FAFSA. Now, you all probably know by now that it did launch on October 1st, and it does so every academic year. Remember that student financial aid is awarded on a first come first serve basis, so you want to submit your FAFSA as soon as possible. You'll want to remember to pay really close attention to your FAFSA deadlines. Your college may have a priority financial aid deadline to get your FAFSA submitted. The state of Louisiana in the form of the TOPS scholarship does have a FAFSA deadline. And yes, the FAFSA can be used as your TOPS application if you qualify. Federal Student Aid has a FAFSA deadline and check with your um, senior counselor. She might have a deadline for you to meet your graduation requirement. Now, who is eligible for federal student aid? Remember that the student must be one of the following to be eligible <clears throat> um, and complete a FAFSA. <clears throat> The student should be a U.S. citizen or U.S. national, or have a green card, or have an arrival departure record, or have a battered immigrant status, or have a T visa. Now, if the student has one of these, but the parents do not, that's fine. The student can still submit a FAFSA, but he will use zeros anywhere a parent's social security number is asked for. You're going to want to begin the FAFSA process by collecting all of the documents needed to complete the form. And by doing this, it really should take no longer than 30 to 45 minutes to submit your FAFSA. These documents include the student and parents, social security cards, because you must report your name and your social security number exactly as printed on your most recent card. The student and parents 2020 federal income tax returns, if you filed one, and if you don't have a copy of this return, now is a good time to contact your tax preparer for a duplicate copy. Gather the student and parents 2020 W-2s because there's information on this form that might not be found on your federal tax return. And then bank statements and records of investments because you're gonna be asked to report the balances of these accounts as of the date you submit your FAFSA. Now you wanna begin by creating the federal student aid ID. Um, because this is going to allow the student and parents to identify themselves on all federal student aid websites, but specifically for our purpose this sneeze, at this time, the FAFSA. Now the FSA ID is going to consist of a unique username and a password created by you, and it should reflect only your personal information. 
Each student and one of his parents needs to create this FSA ID. Now, sometimes on, let's say the student's FSA ID, say they ask for an alternate phone number, which they do. Some students will enter mom or dad's mobile number, but if mom or dad is using that mobile phone number in their ID, this is going to cause trouble when you're trying to sign your FAFSA. And remember, use your personal email addresses um, because once school's out, you may no longer have access to your school account. And then parents, oftentimes communications from federal student aid will get caught in your business spam folder. So make sure you're using your personal information. Also remember that your FSA ID username and password is your official electronic signature and it's legally binding. So make sure that you're recording it because you're gonna need it every year that you're in college and complete a FAFSA, but keep it in a really safe place. If you don't have access to a computer when you're ready to start your FAFSA, you can download the FAFSA mobile app. It's called My Student Aid, and it's really easy to use to submit your FAFSA on your mobile phone. Um, or on any other mobile device with internet access. Or if you prefer, you can complete the FAFSA on the web-based version at fafsa.gov. Now, if the student prefers to use the mobile app and mom and dad uh, prefer to use the web-based version, that's fine. All the information is going to be integrated when it's time to sign and submit. The class of 2022, you graduating high school seniors, need to complete the 2022-2023 FAFSA. Because you're going to see when you get into the FAFSA that there are two options. If you complete the 2021-2022 FAFSA, you're going to be applying for financial aid for this academic year. And to meet your graduation requirement, if you're a Louisiana high school um, senior um, public school system, you do need to complete the 22-23 FAFSA to meet that graduation requirement. Now there are seven sections that need to be completed before you can submit your FAFSA. And the information that you used to create your FSA ID, students and parents, must match exactly what you're entering in your FAFSA. If you're having trouble signing your FAFSA once you get toward the end, it's most often because your information's not matching up. So make sure that you are mindful of that. Make sure your social security number, date of birth, the email address, mobile phone, et cetera, is exactly as listed in your FSA ID. Now, the different sections that we're going to talk about that you need to complete to submit your FAFSA are the um, student demographics, where students will be asked to report their social security number, name, date of birth, email address, home address, residency status, and gender. The school selection section where students will report the name of their high school, the colleges they want your, their FAFSA data to be sent to, and their housing plans on each of those campuses. Dependency status, where the student will be asked to consider a list of 10 questions that will determine whether he is a dependent or an independent student for FAFSA purposes. The parent demographic section where parents will report their social security numbers, their names, their marital status, and email addresses. And then you move on into the parent and student financial sections where each of you will be asked to report your working wages from 2020 and any federal benefits that you receive. 
also, this is where you're going to report the balances of your savings and investment accounts. And now it's almost time to sign and submit the FAFSA. But before you do that, make sure you're reviewing your FAFSA summary. This summary reflects every question you were asked on the FAFSA and your answer to it. So a review of this report is going to ensure that the financial aid offices receive accurate information so that your aid can be processed timely. And then it's time to sign and submit. The student and one parent should sign the FAFSA with their FSA IDs. Now, if you submit without signatures, your FAFSA is gonna be incomplete and you will hear from uh, federal student A if you need to make any uh, corrections. Um, so remember that you need to sign electronically if you can and submit your FAFSA. Now, if you've listed two parents within your FAFSA, we all know that the one who created the FSA ID is the one who's going to sign your FAFSA. Also, as you move through the FAFSA itself, you're going to see a question mark beside every question. You can click on each of those questions if you need a more detailed description of what they're asking you for. You're going to see hyperlinks, that might uh, give you a better explanation of some legal or financial aid terms that you may not hear have heard of before. You can do a FAFSA online chat, you can call federal student aid, or you can contact me on Leela's FAFSA helpline. Also, only the colleges that you're listing on your FAFSA in that school selection section are going to consider you for student financial aid. So make sure that you're adding all of the schools that you're considering. Even if you haven't completed your college um, admissions application yet, go ahead and add them to your FAFSA. Um, they'll hold on to your FAFSA data until you've been accepted. Now, to determine whether a student is a dependent or independent student for FAFSA purposes, he's going to be asked to consider these statements. Will you, the student, be 24 or older by January 1st of the school year for which you're applying for financial aid? Are you married or separated but not divorced? Will you be working on a graduate degree. Do you have children who receive more than half of their support from you? Do you have dependents other than um, do you have dependents other than your children uh, or a spouse who live with you and receive more than half of their support from you? Are you currently serving on active duty in the U.S. Armed Forces? Are you a veteran of the US Armed Forces? At any time since you turned 13, were both of your parents deceased? Were you in foster care or were you a ward or a dependent of the court? Are you an emancipated minor or are you in legal guardianship as determined by a court? And remember that legal custody is not always considered legal guardianship. So make sure you have your documentation with you when you're answering these questions. And then, are you an unaccompanied youth who is homeless or are you self-supporting and at risk of being homeless? Now, if you can answer yes to just one of these questions, and to provide a legal document supporting that claim, then you're considered an independent student for FAFSA purposes, and you will not be required to provide parental information. This is great. We're still um, having people join us. 
So when I hesitate, that's what I'm doing, letting stu students and their parents in our room. Now, if you say live with your grandparents or other relatives um, who are not your legal guardians and they have not legally adopted you, you still must provide information about your biological parents. And if you have questions about this or you're in a specific situation and you wanna to talk to me, I'm going to provide my contact information at the end of the presentation. I'm happy to talk to you individually. Also for FAFSA purposes, you're not considered an independent student simply because say you file your own taxes or you've chosen to live alone and you do support yourself. Uh, you will still need your biological parents' information if you cannot answer one of the prior 10 questions. But if you are in a kind of unique situation, you can always contact your college financial aid offices uh, to talk to them about aid they might have available for you. And then the most commonly asked question that we receive is which parent should I list on my FAFSA? Now the parent or the parents that you've lived with the longest in the past 12 months should be listed on your FAFSA. So if you live with both of your biological parents, then that's easy. You're just gonna list both of them. But if the parent that you've lived in the long, with the longest in the past 12 months is either separated, divorced, or was never married, then you should list only that biological parent on your FAFSA. But if that parent is now remarried, you should also list your step parent because federal student aid needs to know the financial standing of the household that the student has lived in the longest in the 12 months prior to the date that the FAFSA was submitted. If you are identified as a dependent student, but your parents will not provide their information on your FAFSA, you can still submit your FAFSA by stating I'm unable to provide parental information. However, it's your responsibility to contact the college financial aid offices that you've listed on your FAFSA to discuss your situation with them because they might have some additional money available to help you complete your academic year. If you do not contact them directly, you will only be offered the non-need-based, unsubsidized student loans. Uh, don't be shy about reaching out to these counselors. That's their job. They're happy to help you and they will be happy to work with you independently. Now to expedite the process of your uh, processing of your federal student aid, the student and parents should use the IRS data retrieval tool to provide your income information if you filed a 2020 federal income tax return. Now using the uh, IRS DRT is going to greatly diminish your chances of being selected for verification by your college financial aid offices. Um, I will tell you that most often students and parents who do not use this tool will be asked by the college financial aid counselors to go to the irs.gov site, request a tax transcript um, in order for them to verify the information that you've manually entered in the FAFSA. Now, Many times parents or students will contact us telling us that they cannot use the tool and we always direct them as the first step to go back to the FSA ID and check the demographic section of your FAFSA because that is often the reason um, that they can't use this tool. But if you're still having trouble, please feel free to call me. I'll provide my uh, phone number to you in just a moment. Once you're in the IRS site, you are going to want to grab your 2020 federal income tax return. And this is why we always ask you to gather this return before you get started, because you must report your name, address, 
uh, city state zip exactly as it's printed on your return. Even if your name is misspelled or you've moved since you filed your 2020 return, sometimes the site is so sensitive if your um, tax return shows an abbreviated street or avenue, but you've uh, spelled it out within the IRS site, you're not gonna be able to um, transfer your info. So make sure you have that return with you because the IRS wants to make sure that the person that's in their site is the person that filed that return. And then it's time to sign and submit the FAFSA. You're going to, once submitted, automatically receive this confirmation pop-up page. We encourage you to print this page or take a screenshot of it. It's one of the few times that you're going to see all of this information in one place. You'll see the next steps that you need to take to complete the financial aid process. You'll see the, a list of the colleges that uh, you have chosen to receive your FAFSA data. You can review your estimated ex expected family contribution. Now, if you see financial aid estimates on this confirmation page, remember, these are just estimates. Each college financial aid office is going to have to verify the information that you man manually entered in your FAFSA, and then they will be the ones to determine your aid on their campus. Once your FAFSA is fully processed, which usually takes three to five days, it will be shared with your colleges. Then each college financial aid office will begin to identify any aid that they might have uh, for you that you're eligible to receive. Now, if you need to go back later and say add a school or change your contact info, or maybe one of the colleges asked you to make a FAFSA correction, there are a variety of rate ways to do that. But you want to um, make sure that if you are using the uh, electronic uh, option and you're going back into your FAFSA, making those corrections, always sign and submit it. Um, because if you don't, it's just going to hang out there um, on federal student aid sites. So make sure you're signing and submitting each time. And it's also important with all of the tragic events that have happened over the past year um, and before that if your family's financial situation has changed since 2020, you want to contact your college financial aid counselor because they have the ability to adjust your aid by using their own professional judgment. So if someone has lost their job, uh, there's been a reduction in someone in your family's work hours, or you've had some unexpected medical expenses, don't be shy about contacting the financial aid office. There could be money and additional money to help you get through your academic year. The financial aid office is trying to determine your net price. And that's gonna be done by subtracting any grants and scholarships that you might be eligible for at their school from your total cost of attendance on their campus. Now remember that this net price can be paid, it's your responsibility, and you can pay it either in cash or by accepting student loans to pay that balance. And the student then will receive a financial aid offer from each of the schools listed on the FAFSA. They won't all look the same, but they all should show that school's cost of attendance and line item, any grants, scholarships, work study, and student loans that they can offer you. You wanna make sure that you're reading each of them carefully and that you're responding to any requests for additional information from any of the schools. Once you do make your decision on where you're going to college, you always want to accept your financial aid in this order scholarships and grants, because this is gift aid that doesn't have to be repaid, 
Next would be federal work study. You've earned this money and you don't have to pay it back. And then last resort would be your student loans because this is borrowed money and you must repay it with interest. You all know that scholarships are gifts that don't have to be repaid. And I know you have already, already begun your scholarship search. Um, you'll, be, you'll find as you begin your search that there are thousands of them. You'll find them by from your colleges, from your parents or perhaps your employers, private nonprofit organizations, uh, religious groups, some are merit-based and some are based on financial need. That could cover the entire cost of your tuition or just be a one-time award. But the bottom line is that by applying for and winning these scholarships, it's going to reduce the cost of your education, which means um, it's going to reduce your student loan debt. Now this year, we are offering a $1,000 FAFSA completion scholarship for seniors attending a Louisiana high school. So get your uh, FAFSA done as soon as you can and apply for this scholarship. We're also offering a $1,000 Choose Louisiana scholarship um, for those of you who are attending a college in Louisiana because we wanna keep you here in the state. You can visit Leela dot org to grab the applications. They're easy to complete. Or if you want to email me directly, I'll be happy to send the application over to you. For those of you who need additional help paying for college, after you've accepted all your grants, scholarships, federal and state dollars, Leela does administer a nonprofit college loan program called Leela Choice. It's just for Louisiana residents, and you can find out more about that at leelachoice.org. And remember, to continue receiving federal student aid, you must complete the FAFSA every year that you're in college. Now, if you haven't already received a copy of Leela's FAFSA Completion Guide for class 2022, you can always visit leela.org to request a copy. Your counselor may already have distributed these to you. It's in electronic format, but I'm happy to send it to you as well. For questions that you might have, you can always call our FAFSA helpline. I'm happy to stay on the line with you while you complete your FAFSA, or if you have a quick question, either way, jot down this number in case you need it. If you want to email me directly about a situation, you wanna begin a dialogue, please feel free to email me. Now, if you have questions that you wanna talk about tonight, I'm happy to address those. Just drop them there in the Zoom chat box. And I see 